Okay, so carrying on where we left off, we've got our puppet taken out from his background. We've created a, a nice soft mat. We've got rid of the bits and pieces we didn't need to worry about just to save time with the Ultra Key. I'm just going to reset the Ultra Key and start from scratch. So there is the puppet on a less than perfect background. And we need to do the keying itself and make sure that we end up with a fairly good result. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a background in. So I'm just going to pull the puppet up and I'm going to go to my bin and the background we're going to use is the green background here which I'm just going to I just actually want the um, movie I don't want the audio so I'm going to double click on the background to open it in my source monitor and just take the movie by grabbing this icon here so that's the movie in there so we can see what the background actually is now I'm going to select the puppet layer again go back to my effects controls and we're going to take this picker to get rid of the color that we don't want we don't want the green on this layer so I can take the picker and say right that's fairly close to the puppet and it's pretty much about the same there are some shadows over here but around the puppet itself it's pretty evenly lit not perfect but reasonably evenly lit you can certainly see all of the folds and what have you in the background but anyway we will just click about here to get rid of it and now we need to check the alpha channel itself so I'm actually going to turn off the background layer so we don't need to see it it's in there for when we need it and I'm going to go to where we've got output here at the moment we're looking at composite which is the video if you click down you've got the alpha channel and you can see where the problems are when you click on alpha channel I'm just going to pull that through and you can see that we've got problems with bits and pieces showing here however the puppet himself when you pull through there are some problems with the eyes that we're going to deal with a bit later on you can see we've got issues with the eyes coming through here but the puppet himself apart from the eye problems is pretty much okay do have problems when the gun comes in a bit later on Yep, we're shooting a puppet. That's how low we've fallen. Okay, so we've got issues that we need to deal with. So we need to clean up the mat. So this is the mat generation here. And what we can do is we can play with the highlights and the shadows. Ideally, what we still want is nice soft fur around the edge of the puppet. We don't want to lose the, the detail in the hair, but we do want to get rid of this spill. Now, if you've got dark areas, as we have here for his eye, that means that the puppet is transparent. And when we've got grey areas here, what that means is the background is semi-transparent. We can still see some of the background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the shadows. This is supposed to be shadow here. And you'll see that shadows are at 50%. I'm going to pull the shadows down. And as I start to pull the shadows down, I'm saying more and more of these pixels need to be pushed into shadow. And before too long, when I get down, all of the white's gone from the background. But you can notice that the eyes are really problematic. If you start pulling the shadows down, what you really need to be careful of is that you don't add grey into the mask itself. What we can do then is we can take the highlights, the bits that are white, and we can start to pull them up. And no, we can't pull them up very far. We can't play with those because if I pull them up too far, I'm bringing the background in again. So I'm going to have to pull that back down again. And the only other option I have then is to play with the tolerance and the pedestal. And I can start pulling the tolerance up. Does that make any difference? It's not really going to give us much of a difference. How about the pedestal? Now, the pedestal's giving us some change. But if you're not sure about which ones to choose, and you're not quite sure how to play with them, you usually start with the highlights and the shadows. So trying to pull out the whites and the blacks, if you like. Make sure the white is fully white, the bit you're going to keep, and the black is fully black, the bit you want to get rid of. But notice here that there are settings and you can drop the settings down and they will change when you choose different ones. They will change the settings. So let's look at the default. That's how we actually started. And you can see how the settings are set. And then you can go from default to relaxed. And you can see how those have changed. And that's got far too much background in. And then there's one called aggressive. And you can see how much that's changed. That's given us actually a really good result. So pretty much aggressive is going to do just about what we want to do and then custom. Now as soon as you change something it will go to custom anyway. So as soon as you change one of these settings you're actually going to be playing with the, the, the custom settings yourself. So I might just uh, very briefly take out a bit more of the highlights. So these options you've got here are great places to start showing the alpha channel. So that you can end up with a puppet being as white as possible and the background being as black as possible. However you must be careful that you don't flatten the image too much. If I just go back to composite, 
you can see how flat that puppet's looking. Look at his fur. He's got virtually no fluff to it at all. It's just smooth. And that's the sign of a really bad key. So under those bases, I tend to go from default. And then I'm going to play with that. Go back to my alpha channel. And I'm going to try and get rid of as much as I possibly can without losing the fluffiness to his fur. And so that's why I'm playing with these bits and pieces to see what I can achieve. You may not be able to get a perfect result. It's always going to be a compromise. And it's what we often refer to as push-pull. As you push one value, you pull the other until you end up with something that looks OK. OK, so there's a composite, but we can clearly see that there's real problems with this edge. This is spill. Spill from the green screen onto the edge of the puppet. And you'll see that after matte generation, there is matte cleanup. And that cleanup allows us to try and play with the edges a bit and see if we can make things a little bit better. And although you can play with soften, soften is quite an aggressive play, and you'll see it's pulling in the edges quite a lot. It's not something that I particularly want to play with too much because I feel it's a little bit too aggressive for what we're trying to achieve. So the one I would go for is choke. Choke is going to pull in the edges a little bit better or a little bit more predictably perhaps than soften will. So if I start to pull that up and you look at the edge of the mat, you see it's coming in a bit. And you can pull it right up and you can pull it right up and you can see that you're getting rid of everything but you're also softening them out a bit. So if you're going to play with choke, you can pull them in a bit to get rid of the problems and you can play around with the soften and you can play around with contrast and midpoints and you can have a go at trying to make the edge look better but really it's not mat clean up so much as spill suppression is the problem we've got here okay now if you desaturate you're going to desaturate the color of the whole item so you take it up to 100 percent the whole thing's going to go to black and white so we're going to leave that at about 25 percent and we're going to look at spill and i'm going to start pulling spill up and as i start to pull spill up you'll see that the green is disappearing I can even turn the luminance of that down a bit. And as I play with the luminance, you can see that we're just making the edge a little bit less bright. But we've still got some green. Now, there's a way of dealing with this. I'm actually going to turn the background on now using another effect. And the other effect that I would use to get rid of this is actually an alpha effect. So what I'm going to do is select this layer, and I'm going to go to my effects, and I'm going to choose alpha. So type alpha and you'll see that actually the one that I want is down here with stylized and it's called alpha glow and if I take alpha glow and drop it onto that layer I can choose how the alpha channel behaves and you can see already that's actually softened the alpha channel a little bit and given me kind of a glow now I don't really want that glow that looks a bit ridiculous if you look down here at the alpha glow I can take a start color and a stop color and if I choose the start color and the stop color to match the background so say this this uh, leaf color here and I choose the same color for both the start and the stop we end up with something that's called a light wrap type effect in other words we're saying use the background color of the background image to add around the outside of your item that you've keyed out so it kind of begins to look like he belongs now I think that's far too broad and in fact if I just uh, turn off the background you'll see what I mean that it's a bit too broad what we can do is we can go to the glow and take it right down so if I take that down to say 7 I've got a much smoother edge or a much finer edge and if I turn the background up he's beginning to look like he belongs a little bit more rather than that he's something that's stuck on there or composited quite so much and you can play with the, the glow how big the glow is how bright the glow is you can turn it down a bit if you think it's too bright so that it just looks like the item belongs so you've keyed him and you've dealt with all the problems that there might come along. However, we could still potentially have problems with the eyes. If we actually go back to our layer and we look at the composites, we look at the alpha channel, occasionally you can just see a little bit of a problem with an eye. And sometimes when you're quite aggressive, you'll find that an item that you don't want to become transparent has become transparent. And what we can do is we can make sure that these eyes are completely opaque without any transparency on them by doing one further step and that one further step would be to duplicate the layer so hold the alt key and drag him up and then add a mask to this top layer so what I'm going to do is select the top layer and I'm going to turn off the ultra key and I'm actually going to turn off the alpha glow 
But what I'm going to add instead is a four point, just for example, four point garbage mat, F O U R. So take the four point garbage mat to the top item and then scroll down. There's my four point garbage mat. Select it. And that means I can take the points around the area that causes me concern inside this copy. So it's around the eyes. Okay, so take it to around the eyes. I don't need to worry particularly about problems with transparency or about, about uh, edges too much because I'm inside the other mat. And then all I need to do is stick the stopwatches for the, these four parts and then go through adjusting him. So after I move to there, I don't need to change it, but I might need to definitely change it there. So I can actually take these points and just move them around to make sure that the eyes remain inside the mat at all times. Okay, so don't need to worry about my edges. And so if I was to just have that single layer, you'll see that I've just got the eyes, which are over the top of the rest of this item. And because this top layer has got its ultra key turned off and its alpha glow turned off it's going to be fully opaque which means that those eyes are not going to be semi-transparent which means that you're not going to see the background through them so that's how I can deal with the problems that have come up with this particular example now you might then need to do it again with other layers so you can see for instance this gun is semi-transparent so there are other things I'm going to have to work on I might need to key that part separately which you can certainly do it's not a huge job to do, it just means that you need to treat that part separately. And the only reason this is showing here is because I've not animated this particular background. Four point garbage mat. But you can see this is the way it works. So you can see that's the way to actually play with all these things and produce a really good result and to learn how to use the ultra key by playing around with these different presets and then learning how they change these and how you can use that to your advantage. There's one other thing you can do with the Ultra Key is you do have the ability to play around with saturation, hue and luminance for the whole item. So for instance, if I turn the luminance right down, you'll see that the whole item can get much darker or brighter to fit in with the background that you're working with, which I think is very useful. So if you've got quite a dark background, you might actually want to make the item darker. It's not translating to the layer above because obviously we'd have done this before we duplicated the layer. So if I just turn it off at the moment, you can see we can make him a lot darker if we want to, to fit in with his background. So that's using the ultra key effect to key out the background, using a separate layer and a four point garbage mat to be able to get rid of parts that have got semi-transparency in them, and also using an alpha glow to create a light wrap effect in Premiere Pro.